<laughs> How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, thanks. How are you? I'm very well. Oh, yeah. Good to see uh, you. Good to see you too. Nice. Yeah. Um, I'm uh, excited to have this chat with you and um, to formally introduce you to the community and nice. partnership here. Yeah. yeah so w welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. R remind me where you're based again. I, I forget. Uh, In New Jersey. How can you forget? <laughs> Just near where you went to school. <laughs> that's that's what it was. I was like. I just, just don't remember the background, so yeah, yeah. different. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I'm from I'm from Edinburgh, Scotland originally, and then mm -hmm. moved to Florida, and somehow wound up in Northern New Jersey. <laughs> That's you do. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually how it goes, right? <laughs> from, right. From nowhere to somewhere to nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, yeah. But anyway, awesome to have this chat. Uh, be here with you today and um, you know it's a really informal open casual discussion about you and uh, your journey and, and what you do why you do it how you came into this and yeah just to give people an opportunity to get to know you better and cool. a sense of your your energy cool. if you will Yay. yeah so um, you know, one thing that I've, I've been starting with these days, Keith, is is asking you to share just a, a couple, you know, um, comments on, on what brought you to Awakenpedia, what, you know, kind of attracted you to this platform, um, coming into partnership with us, if, if you would uh, just share yeah. a couple comments on that. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, so I think I saw you sort of show up fairly early on and so I was kind of stalking you and then I, I kept seeing these partner introductions of these amazing l bright individuals who all had seemed to be on a similar mission to you and I was just really drawn to it at that point um, and then you did the you know be with me video thing and that and one of my um, I guess one of the teachers from the the college I went to was talking about it and was featured on it and I was I got really intrigued about the whole thing and so started to really look into what you were doing and and it was just drawn to it you know it was just like this feels so right it feels so good what you're doing you know and it feels so timely when we need healing in the world you know right yeah 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 thank you thank you for sharing that and it's it's um I often I think the best and most true way to kind of assess that type of of uh, god nudge if you will of like what's pulling you and mm -hmm. um, trusting that intuitive resonation um yeah i'm all and, about that whole thing that deepak, deepak says about the synchro destiny the the merging of coincidence and destiny i'm, I'm really as things progress in this world, I'm just finding those coincidences just show up more and more you know it's just you know just follow the signs yeah yeah exactly yeah that intuition just listening to that inner voice and letting it be your true compass to guide you through this journey um, for sure awesome okay well uh let's dive in now and okay. um, we'll kick things off by passing the baton back to you and uh if you would just share with us a bit about your past and your journey and how you've kind of gotten to this now okay in this moment um, of course yeah whatever you feel is relevant to share all right um so i'll not start right back in the 60s i'll kind of shorthand it and move forward right <laughs> like <laughs> i'll cut to so but most of my life i was an actor um so i went to college uh, to become an actor i worked as an actor i was a fairly free spirit for the vast majority of my life which was great but then as children came along and responsibility responsibility started to pile up then um I found myself in the corporate world and uh, never an easy fit, but you know, it was kind of a, a means to an end at the time. And, um, and, then I, and then I got into coaching, weirdly, coaching and consulting business in that world. Um, and then two things were happening in parallel. I, was, I wasn't terribly satisfied doing that. It was okay. I, w I was learning a lot. I was finding out that coaching is really effective and to people that are open and 
willing to work on themselves. It's a really, you know, it's a really great, powerful tool. Um, but the thing that was running parallel was I was having my own kind of, as I got a little bit older, I was having these kind of changes that happen and I was beginning to question it all and started to look into the science of aging and longevity and got introduced to some amazing people, David Sinclair, who wrote a book on lifespan and Mark Hyman and that whole functional medicine thing that started, that, that kind of kicked off. Um, and I started, I became a science nerd. I wanted to know everything about the science of aging, the what was modifiable, what we could, what we could actually do. And then one of those coincidences happened that I was introduced from one sphere into the health coaching world and it all suddenly made sense. And I went, ah, okay, right. That's why I coach because now I know, I know the process of that. I know the magic that can happen in there, but now I can combine that with something that I'm truly passionate about, which is um, helping people maximize their time, be able to, you know, extend their lifespan as opposed to just their lifespan, their health span rather, you know, like being able to stay fit and healthy and active and doing all the things you want to do and not be robbed of that independence as you grow older, because it's not really necessary if you look at aging in a certain way. Um, and so that kind of got me on this track of actually being able to to work within a community that wanted to change and wanted to work on themselves, wanted to kind of make their lives better. Um, so hence, here we are. And I'm still a science nerd. I'm still like, can't get enough, you know? <laughs> yeah, so um, I, I, I noticed that, you know, you, you got a certification in health coaching from the, uh, in, tell me if I pronounce this wrong or say it wrong, but the Integrative um, School of Institute. Nutrition. Institute. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. Okay. Beautiful establishment. Beautiful, like-minded, conscious people. Really nice. Yeah. So can you tell us a bit just about what that entailed? And, uh, yeah. I'm actually doing a, 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 an intensive at the moment with them as well, another coaching thing. Um, but they look at, you, you know, it's a health coaching um, course, but they look at the at nutrition as being two different things, primary nutrition and secondary food. And primary food is all the things that nourish us that aren't on our plates. You know, our lifestyle, our families, our health, our finance, everything that makes up our lives. And we look to kind of see where maybe some gaps are, where we can, you know, um, try and improve a, from a holistic point of view, somebody's health and the health being more than just, you know, blood pressure and all that stuff's important, obviously but it's social connections it's all you know looking at it holistically so um it was a, a really interesting experience as i say really nice people are drawn to it. and actually the class i'm in now i think has the biggest subscription that they've ever had the biggest um class they've ever in, taken in for this practicum um which means to me it signals that there is a big need for this and um and people are being called to do this you know and it's been you know health coaches now are in clinics are working with physicians are working with them um, big corporations that that work you know that try and get their staff members into coaching to cut down on their insurance costs so there's all sorts of different applications my particular focus obviously is on um health span and longevity and that doesn't mean just working with older people it means looking at things that are modifiable even in younger people because a lot of times these the kind of four horsemen the cancer diabetes alzheimer's you know um the, the the underlying things start really early on, you know, like decades before you're symptomatic. So it's getting people aware of all that stuff, you know. Mm, long answer, long winded answer when you just asked about the school. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's nice to hear about, um, you know, that program and, and the, the institution more more mm -hmm. detail from an inside source. Because I've heard wonderful things about it, and several of our partners have certifications from the institute so yeah. um i know it's very well run reputable uh education in consciousness in uh, holistic health and everything related to actually helping us heal <laughs> yeah right. um, so oh, yeah awesome can you talk talk now just a bit about you know the specific offerings that you have keith in terms of you know what you, you speak to you, you talk about longevity and health mm -hmm. spans and kind of looking at using a holistic approach to diet lifestyle 
stress management, cultivating yeah. community. Yeah, like so talk, talk to us a bit about like what you serve and offer. So I think, yeah, yeah thank you. Um, you know, as we get older, there are kind of five main things that we look at that are modifiable that can, you know, definitely affect our health outcome. You know, we have diet, like you said, exercise, a big one, sleep, huge one, sleep hygiene, stress management, which is often overlooked. And I could talk about that for hours. And then social connections, the other one, that's a, that's a really huge one. Um, so I'm really I'm running programs at the moment that are either short term kind of intense 12 week little, you know, once a week or once every couple of weeks, um, getting together with clients to, to work on something immediately they want to change. And I remember this is to make small, sustainable, being the key word, changes in, the, in some part of their lifestyle dependent on what their desired outcome is. So I have, you know, a nice short program, then we can go to the longer sort of six month thing. If somebody has something that's, you know, sometimes things take a bit of chipping away or they think they have one area of work to do and then all of a sudden other things show up. So, um, so that's kind of, I'm doing one-on-one -on -one mostly and some couples, you know, um, but that's kind of my area of focus. And I guess diet microbiome, especially is kind of the place that we tend to start, you know, that tends to be underlying a lot of kind of potential health things in the future. And then the other thing is stress we're not designed to be under this chronic stress that we're under all the time. And that again, causes all sorts of health problems from something called inflammation. Now, you know, inflammation is a big deal. And now this kind of chronic stress that we're in, we live in this fight or flight thing all the time. If we're not careful, we're on our phones, we're rushing here, there and everywhere. We've got all these other things to do um, that we're, we're not supposed to be like that so it's managing stress finding modalities to manage stress and that could be anything from you know meditation we spoke about that before i've had a meditation practice for like 40 years um from meditation to um hormesis another you, you know about hormesis that sort of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger so those those little bouts of acute stressors on your body are really good at making a your body learning how to deal with that kind of overall stress so things like cold plunges and sauna sauna's huge sauna's brilliant right um exercise certain exercises hit exercises you know um resistance training all that kind of stuff really good stresses for your body so um restricted eating is also a stressor so all that kind of intermittent fasting kind of stuff also really good you know so um so i think those are probably the main areas that um i tend to be dealing with with people it would be kind of working on microbiome stress and probably exercise mm. okay and in terms of the um, underlying intention and objective of the work you do with your clients and just perhaps you know more generally why you're doing this you know um can you speak to just kind of that you know mission orientation that you carry i know you talk about helping people to come into greater uh, vitality and mm -hmm. joy and ease in how they live this life as they age so you can be live young at any age right as that's you, it you've said uh, yeah that's that's really it living younger longer right you know they um if you look at there's a lot of studies about the blue zones you know um and that whole thing if you know about that dan butner did a beautiful job of kind of documenting these blue zones places where people tend to be longer lived and healthier and looking at the you, you know they're, they're happier they're more purpose driven they have a you know they have purpose is a big one you know it's a beautiful story of a woman who i think was like 109 or something in a korea and she somebody said you know why don't you take it easy at that your age you're up first thing in the morning you're out in the village you're doing all the stuff and she said no i've got to get up because i've got to love my grandchildren you know so her purpose was so noble but that was her purpose in life and it was so beautiful so a lot of things to learn from those kind of um, older lived communities. Um, so I think the idea that we now have, you know, our chance of mortality um, double every eight years. So it's quite a steep curve by the time you get sort of 60 and beyond, you know, with all these things that kind of come into play if you're not careful. But if you look at that part of aging as a disease and then you kind of can counteract that with other stuff, then there's no reason why we can't have a life that's 
you know, kind of you know, much more gradual and then just, you know, you go to sleep and that's the end rather than this kind of, so it's about quality of life. It's about having a health span. It's about not being robbed of all the things you love doing right you don't you want to play with your grandkids or be at somebody's wedding or work in the garden or whatever the case may be these are the things that we that gradually get eroded as we get older if we don't you know take the necessary action and and, and look at what we're actually doing because we now know the science backs the fact that aging can be treated like a disease or a combination of um, of different diseases that we can modify that we now know about epigenetics, that, you know, the, our genes load the gun, but our environment pulls the trigger, you know? So there are definite ways our genes express because of the way we live, you know? So does that answer your question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's some type of funny fireworks that happened in the background, and I was like, what is going on there? <laughs> I liked it. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> that happened but let's it, we'll, we're going with we'll it go we're with flowing it. with it <laughs> it, I think it, makes, it was perfect timing with the culmination of, <laughs> of what you're saying <laughs> we're all gonna live forever <laughs> yay <laughs> yeah um, and i you know it's it feels like the work you're doing in in the context of longevity and living young longer, Keith, is, is really timely as well with an aging population and just more and more people who are coming into older age that of mm -hmm. course want to continue to live. And the number one question is, well, how do you, how do, you do that, right? Mm -hmm. And how can you continue to carry that light and vibrancy with you? Yeah. And that as we kind of, the life cycle matures in that sense and always remembering who we are throughout that process the of truth course, of course. our essential nature of mm -hmm. um so I can it, that just yeah. say one thing that um you know the healthcare costs in the car you know america and okay i don't know audience maybe america i don't know but um the us is a great place to be if you get chronically sick right it's got a great sick care system but if you want to stay well and healthy, not quite so focused, you know, um, they spent last year's four million was the healthcare spend and 90% of that went on chronic conditions. And so if you think you just need to move the needle a little bit there, you know, to make a huge change for, for people's lives and, you know, and all sorts of other considerations to do with, you know, and where we should be putting our money in the country and things. So yeah, it makes it just is a no brainer to me. Again, obviously we've got some negative forces working against us in terms of, you know, there's a joke if, if you know, big food, big agriculture, big farm, all that farm, all that sort of stuff. Um, there's some forces that we have to overcome, but that's why I think this is very tiny. And that's why I think so many people are drawn to this kind of work, you know, that there has to be a change. We're sitting on the beach watching the tsunami coming. There is an absolute crisis coming if we don't make a change. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very important points. And um, especially in, in, in the United States, uh, as you mentioned, in mm -hmm. terms of, of, of uh, to care system, as they say, and treating symptoms rather than causations of yeah. illness and not yeah. looking at the energetic dynamics that underlie so much of, of sure. this process. So, uh, um, yeah, more and more people are turning to alternative holistic therapies as opposed to popping pills in and of themselves mm -hmm. as we're starting to wake up, right? And that's why awakening is tied to holistic healing in such a natural, strong way. Yeah. Um, there's such a strong correlation because the more that you wake up to who you truly are, the more you realize that we have everything within us and are our own medicine. And to be able to access that vitality through ourselves naturally, that's is it. within our re means it's within it. our re and uh yeah so and it seems like that's largely keith a lot to what you point to and what you facilitate in your work of helping people to access that yeah. vitality within themselves through you know 
helping people to kind of optimize their lives and the inputs of their life. 100%. And yeah, 100%. And that's, yeah, really well said. I think this, the body is so intelligent. And a lot of the times we're you know, unwittingly just, uh, you know, insulting it in so many ways from the things we eat, from our environmental toxins, from, you know, every which way. There are so many, uh, you know, insults to our bodies that when we learn to kind of listen, quieten down, tune in, really begin to have some form of intuition about what's actually going on and, and some understanding of, like, you know, like you say, food is medicine, but food can also be poison, you know? So, but, so it's knowing, it's just knowing what to do. It's so bewildering for people going to a supermarket, for example, you know, if, if it says healthy on it, you know, it's not right. So it's like, yeah. it's just that, you know, finding whole foods. So it's, 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 it's stacked against us kind of, I guess. And that's why we've got to fight the good fight, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like there's a bit of like, there's it's dual natured in the sense that there's an educational component to this where we actually have to help people to realize that a lot of what they've been told and fed are, is not true when it right. comes to what is truly healthy and, and really good for you and, and serving your health and this healing journey. Yeah. Um, so it's an awareness aspect, right? Mm -hmm. of, of bringing people into true insight and true knowledge sure. and then integrating that insight and knowledge into their daily life mm -hmm. through their exercise through their routines through diet through yeah, exactly. you know their social networks and yeah. creating this this coherence mm -hmm. all the way through so that the energy can flow the vitality can flow naturally and and yeah. in many ways without that then chronic stress survival uh signaling being constantly expressed mm -hmm. we can live with ease and carry that that uh carry that ease with us in our daily lives yeah that's that's the goal right that's the goal and then you're open to all sorts of opportunities and i think you know talking about those changes so in the in the work i do they don't have to be big swings every time right we've got to just kind of chip away and just move the needle a little bit at a time so it's again it's making finding out where the gaps are where you are where you wish you were what's the where's the gap and then how do we just kind of put one foot in front of the other to to move that needle along a little bit you know um so it's not it's not radical thing it's a very gentle um and empathetic thing okay okay yeah so um you know in terms of where people can learn more about you keith and your offerings and the different things you have I know there's, you have a website. It, would you recommend that's the, you know, kind of the hub for people to yeah. learn? It's as good as any, yep. So KeithKirkwood.com <laughs> or Keith Kirkwood Coaching on Instagram. Um, and then Awakenpedia, of course. That's yeah. where to find me. <laughs> Everybody go there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, be, you know, everyone you can learn more about your bio, background, direct booking links, discounts, all that good stuff in our member form. Um, For sure. Which people can and, access. And I, but. and I want to say I'm really, really grateful to you for all, everything you're doing, for one thing, but also just for, for including, and, you know, I was looking at the all the partners again over the last couple of days leading up to this, and there's just some incredible people that are doing all they can to improve their lives, improve the lives of others, and ultimately heal the world. And I feel really humbled to be kind of invited into the, you know, into this collective. So I, I really do appreciate you and everything you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you saying that. And, you know, I echo back the sentiment to you of my appreciation for for being able to see this for what it is mm -hmm. and for accepting the invitation to, to join in on this mission of service and helping to heal the world at the root level. Yeah. Um, you know, because the world is suffering in many ways and it's, in, it's very dysfunctional and at rates that we haven't seen before when it comes to suicide or addiction, mental illness, mm -hmm. overdoses, mm -hmm. many of these plagues and uh change is necessary sure. in order to address these things so 
that's the what we're doing here and that's you know why you're a part of this and and i see the value you offer to facilitate that mission um so it's you know i appreciate your involvement as thank much you. as you do yeah thank you that's very nice thank you yeah, yeah. um all right well I, I like to kind of wrap these things up by asking you to share any type of guidance or insight wisdom that you would like to kind of impart with the community and um it can it can you can speak to any portion of this journey uh or any anything at all but the the ask here and, and the impulse is just to see what comes up through the heart space in terms of any type of guidance you'd like to share oh. okay i'm not going to overthink i'm just going to say that, that of all the areas that we look at in terms of holistic health the one that is supremely important I would say and kind of often underrated is sleep um, and you know your body does so many incredible things while you sleep from kind of filing your memories of the day I've got a whole theory about how your life speeds up by the way but that's enough for another day and um, fight you know um, clearing out the garbage you know it does all these incredible things as you go through these um, sleep stages and if you're in deficit for sleep then that will really seriously impact your health so um, as best you can, if you know, make sure you're getting seven to eight hours sleep a week, a night, seven to eight hours sleep a week, can you imagine? Um, seven to eight hours a night, um, good quality. If you're having trouble sleeping, please hit me up because I have a lot of nice little hacks that will help. Um, but, you know, it's critical, absolutely critical to every other function in your body um, and your general health and well-being. You want to wake up in the morning. If you're not waking up in the morning ready to jump out of bed and kind of, you know, make the most of what you have that day, then it's the sleep that's at fault. It's the it's your quality or a, a quantity of sleep. Mm. Mm. Very nice <laughs> advice. And, and I can uh, speak from my own direct experience about how true that is. Um, and I think everyone knows who's had a, a good night's sleep versus a bad night's sleep, how impactful that is on your day and your ability to see clearly and, and just uh, carry that vitality. I mean, from a spiritual perspective, Keith, I see sleep as the, the way of kind of plugging back in uh, to source and and recharging quite literally mm -hmm. like a tesla <laughs> right yeah <laughs> no that. absolutely and uh you know and that's that's where we source our life energy mm -hmm. to extend it in this 3d world so sleep is integral without it we quite literally die mm -hmm. and so um yeah sleep is absolutely necessary and you know i'd love to do a, a workshop perhaps sometime on on yeah. sleep and its importance and optimizing mm -hmm. sleep hygiene yeah i would love to i'd love to do that it's yeah. great um, a great have you come across grounding sheets yet have you tried a grounding sheet on your bed yet no no what's that look it up look oh, it up you've wait, got the weighted blanket no not the weighted about? blanket no a thing you actually lie on that's that's kind of plugged in just to the ground part of your outlet um just look it up it has all manner of amazing effects it's just crazy right. um, but, anyway, that, but yeah let's do that let's do that because i think it's important for people even if people think they get a good night's sleep it's really important to just really optimize it's how you interact with the world is so dependent on how you sleep yeah yeah absolutely it's again another education thing we need to help people to really understand what's true yeah. sleep Optimization hygiene does not just mean getting the number of hours, but what is the quality of those yeah. hours and, and how do you assess what quality means? And so, yeah, all right, let's do let's that do for it. sure. And nice wearables now as well. There's so many great wearables and mm -hmm. kind of hacks that way, right? That you can really see. And that's, that's really given agency back to people about their health, which is lovely. So they can track what's actually going on. Great, you know? Mm. Yep. All right, Keith. Well, lots lots of beautiful creations co-creations together ahead for us and uh 
looking forward to seeing how this relationship unfolds yeah. um, as Me it too. will. Me and too. Uh, yeah, thank you again for being here. And uh, more to come soon. Lots of love. You're very welcome. It's been great. All thank right. you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.